Hello, good afternoon, students. This is Professor Henderson, and today we will be discussing um, the head to toe assessment, head to toe assessment, chapter 31 in Potter and Perry. So let's look at the uh, student learning outcomes for this chapter. Upon completion of this chapter, the student will be able to discuss the primary purpose of a physical assessment, describe cultural diversity and its influences on nursing assessment, describe interviewing techniques to enhance communication, list techniques for preparing for physical assessment, discuss normal physical findings in young, middle age, and older adults, demonstrate techniques used for assessing each body system, discuss normal physical findings with patient, discuss preventive screening diagnostics for appropriate age group. So as a nurse, you are required to uh, do a head to toe assessment so what are some of the indications for a head to toe assessment? So a few of the indications for a head to toe assessment is that for triaging a patient for emergency care, for example, if you have a patient that comes in into the emergency room and they're complaining of chest pain, that patient will get the first priority. On the other hand, if you have a patient coming in and they complaining of, um, let's say, a sore throat, they will be triaged. They will be triaged depending on the acuity of the illness. So triaging a patient for emergency care, the patient that has the more acute condition will be triaged first. Also, a head to toe assessment is done for certain jobs. You need to have a comprehensive um, physical, physical um, assessment done if you're um, applying for a new position as a nurse. Even for school, if you're coming to school, you're required to have a physical assessment done. Um, it's also done to admit patient to hospital or long-term care facility to see if the patient can perform activity of daily living or requires um, help. Um, use physical examination. Purpose of the physical examination is to gather baseline data about the patient health status, supplement, confirm, or refute subjective data obtained in the nursing history, identify and confirm nursing diagnosis, Make clinical decision about the patient changing health status and management. Evaluate the outcome of care. So um, were your outcomes met? Do you need to go back and um, tweak your, your, um, your interventions? Make a sound clinical judgment about your patient status based on your baseline data. I have an in-class question here. This is a very simple one, and the answer is C. How about um, cultural sensitivity? Cultural influences has a direct um, impact on patient's behavior. So um, patient health beliefs. If, pa if a patient does not believe in taking medications, or they don't believe in chemotherapy, do you think they're more likely not going to be um, compliant with their medication? Because depending on their perception about their health status, use of alternative therapy, what are some um, alternative therapy that patients use? A lot of patients use homeopathic medications. They use hot or cold. The, these are different type of practices that patients have depending on their culture. Nutritional habits, certain culture, cultural foods, do a dietary intake, inform the dietitian, have the dietitian involved in the care of the patient. 
relationship with family? Do the patient have support system? Are they close? Are they far away? Personal comfort zone. Personal comfort zone has to do with the patient home. They feel more comfortable in their own environment. Avoid stereotyping. Do not take negative, talk negative about your patient based on their age or cultural background. In order for a nurse to provide competent nursing care, he or she must demonstrate cultural sensitivity towards her patient. I have a case study here. So Mr. Neal is being admitted to the surgical floor for a bowel surgery. He is a 76 year old and has a history of rectal bleeding and bowel changes. He smokes two pack of cigarettes a day and says he has no family history of colon cancer. His wife is with him. Jane is a nursing student assigned to care for Mr. Neal. She begins her assessment with review of Mr. Neal's chart and the healthcare provider. So what is the next step in the nursing process? So Jane is a nursing student. What's the next step she needs to do? She needs to do a general survey, an inspection of the patient. Is the patient dressed appropriately? Is the patient um, alert to time, place, and person? Is the patient answering questions in a logical manner? Also take a full vital signs, height and weight. Is the patient allergic to any medications? So preparation for the examination, as we know, infection control, that's, that's a key, right? So perform hand hygiene 20 to 30 seconds according to the Center of Disease Control and Prevention. Patient with open lesions and infected wounds, please use standard precautions. Environment, the environment needs to also be quiet and well lit and warm, decrease in stimulation. Make sure the equipments are working to the optimal level. They are properly calibrated and make sure you have the appropriate equipment such as the diaphragm, the stethoscope, the blood pressure cuff, otoscope, tuning forks. Physical preparation. Place the patient in a comfortable position depending on the patient's um, limitation. Sometimes in a physical assessment, you have to place the patient in multiple position. Psychosocial preparation of the patient. Patient may view the examination as very stressful. Use an open and professional approach. Assessment of the age and group. Styles of approach differs based on the patient's developmental stage. For example, a pediatric assessment focuses on health assessment and health promotion and growth development. Assessment of an older person takes a longer time due to the older person has more chronic illnesses. Get family members involved. Inquire about their um, religious and occupational um, status. Organization of the examination. Head-to-toe assessment. Compare each side for symmetry. Assess body system most at risk for being abnormal. Offer a frequent rest period, especially for older geriatric patients. Perform painful procedure at the end. Be specific when recording assessment. Record quick notes during the examination. Complete large notes at the end of the examination. If you are doing a focus assessment, a focus assessment, um, zero in on one specific area. For example, if the patient comes in, and they're complaining of a um, sore throat, your focus assessment will be on the respiratory. 
lungs and, and coughing and temperatures and so on and so forth. Techniques for physical assessment always starts with inspection. Inspection has to do in um, observation, looking at the patient, general appearance, palpation, use warm, warm arms before um, touching patient, palpate the skin to feel for temperature, moisture, and mass, use the dorsal aspect of your hand to check for temperature. Percussion has to do with tapping, tapping on the skin with your fingernails to produce a vibration. Auscultation has to do with listening with your stethoscope. Use the diaphragm of the stethoscope for high pitch sound. Use the bell of the stethoscope for low pitch sound. Listen to the lung for advantageous sounds, crackles, wheezing, ronchi, and friction rub. Listen to the different landmarks of the um, heart for S1 and S2. Use adequate lighting. Validate your findings with the patient. Position and expose the body part as needed to um, all surface can be viewed, but privacy can be maintained. Inspect each size for size, shape, color, and symmetry. Use direct lighting to inspect body cavities. Check and compare one body part against the other for symmetry. Inspect the skin for erythema or hyperpigmentation, mass or any lesions. Palpation. So with palpation, use the finger pads to assess uh, position, texture, and consistency, and masses and fluids. Your hands should be warm. Your nails should be short. Assess temperature using the dorsal aspect of your hand. Light palpation is about half a centimeter. Deep palpation is about one centimeter. Ask patient if you're feeling any pain or any discomfort. Percussion. Percussion produces, um, it's a tapping motion with your finger, 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 fingertips to produce a vibration. Sound determines location, size, and density of a structure. For example, tempani is normally heard over the stomach. Percussion over the posterior thorax or over the liver or kidney produces a dull sound. Auscultation, listening with your stethoscope. Auscultate S1, S2, PMI. And auscultate the anterior thorax and the posterior thorax. Listen for advantageous sounds. General survey. So when a patient comes in into the um, clinical settings, does the patient appear to be his stated age? Is the patient answering questions appropriately? How is the mood, the affect of the patient, the gait of the patient? Is the patient um, standing erect? Is the patient dressed appropriate for the season? How is their speech? Is it um, pressured? Does the patient appear to be in any distress? General survey has also to do um, taking a full vital signs of the patient, including their um, temperature, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. Is the patient experiencing any pain? Also their height and weight, their BMI. How about the hair, the skin? Inspect the skin for color. Light, 
light color person, skin weight 